Hello, and welcome to another episode of Satisfactory. And, since the last time, I did go ahead and loaded up my world in that save editor, and went to my base here, and just deleted it. It's gone. Since then, I just restructured a few things. I ran some resources again, I re-ran some of the power lines, I actually went out to here and got this coal and ran it all the way down through here and into the base, upgrading my steel production. But what we need to do today is the only real resource that we are missing that I have in my spreadsheet here showing where all of my different resources are for the, uh, the belts is rubber and plastic, which are oil-based. So as you can see, I kind of have some oil pipelines set up, and we're gonna go take a look at those pipelines now. So previously, I had my little platform here when we were searching for black gold, but we're past that these days. We are now looking for all of the pipelines, all of the oil. So, there is a total of four oil nodes here. We've got one, two, three, and four. This one and this one are normal nodes. That one and that one are pure nodes. Now, when you're going with like a miner, you can put like a Mark III miner on a pure something, say a pure iron, and you'll get like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of iron per minute and you can put on a really fast uh, conveyor belt a mark 5 and you can rip those off there really quickly but for pipelines you're limited you can only have 300 per minute it's the max flow rate so we need to make sure that each one of these is actually outputting 300 per minute now I've already done it to that one and that one but we'll do it to this one here. This is only doing 120 because that's all that's allowed. There is no higher level oil extractor. There is no oil extractor Mark II, Mark III. It's simply oil extractor, which maybe that might be something they want to uh, put in there in the future, oil extractor Mark II. But for now, the only way that we're actually going to be able to increase the amount of oil out of here in order to get this pipe to be full is we have power shards. And if we stack this thing up and it's going to cost a lot of power, 40 megawatts, and we power it up all the way. Let's just uh, purge this pipe segment here, get this thing kicking off. We can actually get it to 300 parts per minute but it's going to cost us 173 megawatts. Ugh, it's a lot of freaking power, but it means that this is an actual 300 line. So we have those two 300 lines here. So that's three 300 lines. And then because this one is pure, we don't need to put that many of the shards into it. We just have to put one. We still do need to put a shard. But as we come down here, this guy on a pure node gives us 240. So if we plop a shard in and we say target for 300, he only has to go at 125% clock speed. So not as much power. We can flush that segment there. We can see 300 parts per minute, but only 57.2 megawatts. Realistically, we have a lot of power. We have 2,400 capacity. That is entirely running off of our power plant here at the lake. As I removed a little bit of the coal generators here that were running on petroleum coke. Now, it's going to be a little bit of a, a walk and drive back to base. But this, just wanted to show this off. We got this all set up here. And now, we don't have to touch this again. We're going to have four lines of 300, 1,200 oil coming into our base. And it's all in a nice straight line, straight 
from there all the way down across the gap and ending up back here. I believe it's slightly angled. Uh, it's going like this angle or something like that, ending up right back here, which is right beside my base. It's absolutely wonderful. But we'll just take a quick drive back as we talk about what we want to do. Before we do that, if we take a look at the refinery, we can see what some of the ratios are going to be for us. Now, I do have a fair amount of the alternate recipes now. We've got turbo fuel and all that kind of stuff. But we really just need plastic and rubber. So I'm just going to focus on the basic plastic, rubber, and petroleum coke today. Plastic, 30 per minute. Rubber, 30 per minute. Well, how convenient when the fact that we have pipelines that have 300 per minute. So we can run 10 of each of those and it'll work out perfectly. And I should stop up here and make sure to refill my fuel. There we go. Pop, popped up. Now we can drive back. So, I can't remember if it's rubber or plastic. I think it's rubber gives you, uh, both of them give you uh, 20 of the actual unit of the resource, rubber or plastic, per minute. So if I have 10 of them, we're going to get 200 per minute into the system. But we're also going to have that uh, waste product, whatever it's called, the uh, residual something. That waste product, of course, is going to be an issue unless we can get rid of it. We can do the same thing. We can turn it into petroleum coke and actually burn it for power. And it turns out that I believe it's a rubber makes 10 of the waste product and plastic makes 20 or the other way around. But when you have it with 10 each, it's 100, 200. It's a full 300 pipeline of the waste product. So it makes it really easy to then just run one pipeline into seven and a half or realistically eight with one of them underclocked or just leave it normal refineries to make petroleum coke and with 120 petroleum coke per minute each we're going to get in total 900 petroleum coke per minute which is good enough to run because each coal burning power plant needs 25 36 more uh, coal plants so we can get a whole bunch more power simply because we're going to make an excessive quantity of petroleum coke which then is great however there's some issues the main one being is that like if you can see to the side here a lot of my belts that I have going are backed up I'm simply not using the amount of resources that I'm actually making because there's no demand for them right now. I've yet to set up a lot of storage devices as well, but I'll get to that in the future. And I think I can squeeze underneath this. Oh, yes, I can. So for regular resources, that's fine. Like if you can just imagine, uh, you're rolling a bit. Stop. There we go. If you can just imagine, say, the reinforced steel plates here. Steel plates and screws. But if I have no need for making more of them, things will back up eventually. The constructors that are making these individual parts will back up. And then eventually the smelters that are making the ingots will back up. And then eventually it'll back up all the way back to the miner. But then the miner just goes dormant and things are fine. But with this kind of system it could get backed up and it's just a little annoying if it does because say for example one part of it gets backed up if we have our refinery down and we're making plastic and we have a heavy oil residue if the residue gets backed up i can't make plastic if the plastic gets backed up then the residue isn't being made. Maybe I need both of them. Maybe I need the residue to power my base. 
So we have to watch out for those uh, sort of relief valves. And with that, I unlocked, and I think it's really awesome, the Smart Splitter. I didn't know it could do this, but you can set it so that a sp specific thing, for example, here, it'll try to go to the right output, but if it can't, it'll overflow to the center output, which means that I can have my rubber and plastic flowing through here, and if I not using much of them and my belts are backed up they'll just automatically go to an awesome sink and I'll get some points for it without having to worry about the fact that if I just put a normal splitter there I wouldn't actually get my full plastic and rubber I'd only be getting half of it which is what I had before vastly inefficient but my previous setup was just like, set it, forget it, just go out there and take a whole inventory of plastic back and then use it sparingly because I was still just manually crafting stuff with it at that point. But now I've got stuff that I need to automate plastic use. So I have basically the framework here all set up. Uh, we're just going to do the uh, plastic and rubber today and get the petroleum coke most likely figured out. And then, in the future, I'm definitely going to want to go through and uh, get fuel, because I want to be able to start using the, the jetpack. I'm going to need to make that into package fuel, eventually turbo fuel. Um, I'm going to need to do some polymer resin and put polymer resin into the base, because I want to be able to make polyester fabrics so I can automate fabric crafting. But, one thing at a time. You can see here, we have our oils pipelines coming in. The great big long trip that they made. And if we uh, go into the photo mode and zoom in, we can see in the distance there, all the pipes and all of the oil nodes over there. They're all running back to here. So, uh, on my setup, I have it so that rubber is the top line. So rubber is here. This is rubber. So what I need to do is set myself up a... Oh, actually, I think... Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll pop ourselves into a lookout tower first for the f to set up the first one and get it properly positioned. And then we can just use it as a template with snapping. But we have the input of oil, we're going to have the output of the leftover byproduct, and also the rubber going on the belt. So that's all set up. So a refinery with inputs on the left will center that, and it should be ready to rock right there. Okay, and now... I can just repeat that going backwards here. So in total, each one of these will be doing 30. And I have 300 in the pipe. So I've, I've laid out space for 10 of them. Which is going to be ridiculous. The amount of rubber that we'll be making will be amazing. And there. And just a few more. Now, building up here on top of the uh, the waterfall, it's actually to the point where I am pretty close to... Uh, and then this is the end here. This is the residual byproduct that will then go and probably be like right here. I'll put in some uh, stuff to uh, manufacture it. But if I go over here... We're like right at the edge of the map. It's like somewhere right around here. Yep, there we go. That's the edge of the map. Right there. <laughs> so I can't go much further that way. Uh, it's good that these are only uh, 10 uh, whatever's long. Like 10 uh, things. So it is, this is rubber. Rubber, rubber, rubber. 
So set all these to rubber and then get all the pipelines and everything connected. So I'm going to pipeline into there and this will be my byproduct. And then we're going to put under logistics, we'll get a merger. We'll plop a merger on top of there and then we'll just wait. How much does this make? 20 per minute. Yeah, we can just do a normal belt. Then we got a normal belt coming out and uh, repeat set up the whole rest of it like that with my mergers and it's interesting the way i'm doing this uh because i'm not doing uh i'm just doing the pipes sort of hovering just placed all the the junction crosses first and then i put the uh belts on s supports the way that was working it would didn't like it if i had like placed this the merger first and then try to do the uh, the pipe because it's encroaching on the clearance but if I do the pipe then do the merger and then do that it doesn't care that works so that's a little weird but eh, whatever whatever floats the boat so I'll just repeat this here I have to go get some more uh, copper sheeting as I only have seven left and I'll get all of these set up and I'll be right back okay looks like that is all connected now I can get this a start right away here get rid of that little tail there that doesn't need to be there as if if it backs up at this stage it's okay because I don't have any power connected to it yet. I'm not using that power. I'm still uh, still operating well within my coal-fired plant's power limit. So I can put the oil in and things should start flowing. Yes. Oh my god. I am increasing up my production by a factor of 10 as previously I just had a single of these refineries making me rubber and plastic and such and now oh yes look at all of that rubber coming out now if I did this correctly the rubber should go along here and when it reaches this guy it should automatically go to the right it should all go that direction. None of it goes this direction. Unless this is filled up and none of, like it can't go this direction. Then it goes to the awesome sink. So that is working exactly how I wanted it to. Perfect. All right. So now I just need to duplicate this right here for I'm gonna get up on my my lookout tower again so I can get this thing placed properly with the left to right and I can duplicate this entire process right here which way did I how did I set this up these things have their little feetsies here so this one is just a little bit back from there okay I will copy that as I want the world to be symmetrical. It makes me happy when the world is symmetrical. So we'll line up like that and we'll move one tick. There we go. That's where we want to be. Click. Perfect. Perfection. And now I can set up all of the plastic as that will just take me another quick moment to run some lines and to do all of the belting and piping and with the final couple bits of power here and linking it up to the main grid our plastic is now in progress and we are making plastic oh that is excellent I still haven't figured out all of this stuff let me just purge that network That'll be my temporary way of uh, keeping these systems running. 
Aha, uh -huh, see, it's backed up. Overflow goes there. System doesn't back up. But I want to zip down this line here. I'm going to need to get some more motors anyway as I'm out of stuff to build more refineries. Yeah, I need motors and pipes. Yeah, motors and pipes. But along here, way down here, we have the first actual use of plastic. And it's going to be automating circuit boards. And I wanted to see such plastic arrive. And, ooh, it's coming, it's coming, it's here! Plastic? There it is! <gasps> the first piece of plastic coming on in. Ah, uh, yes! It's automated! We have circuit boards! Woo! -hoo! And now I can expand this out, because I've got 200 plastic coming in. And this is 30 per minute, so I can make several more of these and get a lot more circuit boards per minute. And then circuit boards are finally going up onto their proper belt and joining the rest of them heading down. Ah, wonderful. Because getting plastic and rubber was essentially the last thing I needed until we're going to go up one more story and start building manufacturers on the top floor and really starting to pull down a lot of resources out of the belts. But hey, we're there. Uh, so now we need some... Now we need to figure out our... waste product and make petroleum coke. So refinery, I'm going to need seven and a half of these, so eight. So I'm going to need 80 motors, and I'm going to need to grab some, some pipes as well. And probably just some more uh, copper sheets. Uh, motor, motor, motor. Where my motors go? That's my smart plating. Ah! Here is my motor production. Doing kick-ass stuff all full up. Exactly what I needed. Just grab all those motors. Now grab the rest of the, the parts and get back to the build site. All right, so we've got all of this byproduct here, and I think I think I should be able to just do it right here, actually. So if I do refineries and I line them up, probably have to extend this out a little bit more. with here. Possibly aligning this... Eh, I can align it in the center. Yeah, that's fine. I could do every two. So then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in total going along there. And I don't have to run this pipeline very far at all. Actually, it looks like I can probably uh, bring back this junction cross a little bit to the center here. Yeah, let's do that. Disconnect those for a moment. Uh, oh, am I going to be able to put a pipeline through there? No, I have to reset that thing. <laughs> God damn it. Ah. Uh. Uh, you are going to be want a junction cross. We'll just put it right in the center of this one. Pipe to there. And then reset this whole thing. Oh my god, it's so annoying. All the little things you have to do. You gotta click on this one first, and then get that, and then set to that, and belting into there, and then refinery, merger onto there, then back that into there, and then I can get rid of this side of it. Ah, there we go. Now that's fixed. Alright. So then you can come back down over here, but we're going to want junctions everywhere, because we're going to split it off. So every center line, essentially, 
like there, there, and where you are, here, there, and there, and one more, right there. Then, of course, we need to expand out this foundation a little bit here. Uh, a little bit too far away there. And we can hook everything up. Beautiful, beautiful byproducts. No, I've got to change this one too. <laughs> so annoying. So annoying. <sighs> At least it's fast. And I know the process. Just gotta fucking bang it out here real quick. Uh, get this pipeline there first. There we go. Then put the merger back in. Then put that up. And then get rid of the far side of it. That's not required. There we go. Alright. Now we can do the oil extractor. Oh, the extractor? Refinery. That's what I needed. And we'll pop ourselves up on a lookout tower so I can get this nicely positioned. And do I want to leave myself any space here? I could put it centered right there. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I can just put it right beside it. The pipeline goes into it nice and easy. And then I'll just need one more foundation probably on the backside in order to take the petroleum coke out and pass it along. So, exactly the, the distance that I had previously. Wonderful. Build that out and done. Alright. So now I just need to copy that out. Ah, so much refineries. Such wonder. Get this all nicely packed in here. Don't need to do anything super special about it. Just take the system that I had before and make it bigger. There we go. So then each one of these will be the petroleum coke recipe. Now we do have eight of them, but we're not going to need all eight. It's only seven and a half. So one, I could turn down one or I could just the run a bit slower altogether and it'll average out over time. It should be fine. Plug them all in, petroleum coke, and then we're going to need to power them all. So we'll just plop down a line there, we'll get that cooked into there. That should give it plenty of power. And for... Ugh. With 900 petroleum coke, let me bring out the calculator here. 900 petroleum coke divided by 25 per minute at max capacity means I can do 36 more power generators. That's a little ridiculous. We obviously don't need that much power generation right now. And also, we're not going to have enough belts speed in order to do that. We only need to... We'll have to cut that in half, right? Like, if we try to do that 900 on a belt, we won't. We have to do two 450 belts. So, if I slap down a merger here, and we can't build anymore that way because we'll die, so we'll have to build this way. We'll merge this direction, like so. And we'll do those four. So this is making me 120 per minute. All right, oh, let's just do Mark Four belts everywhere here. Uh, 
Ah, uh, wrong direction. Don't go into the side of it, silly monkey. There we go. So we have a 450 belt of petroleum coke. That's coming down along here. Uh, how can we fit in the power? That is a very good question. It could be. Oh, because we're also going to need to do water and everything, right? Uh, it could be that we fit it in right there. And we put a bunch of water out there. Ah, I'm not sure how we're going to do it yet. But we could do it. Oh, this is how we could do it. Uh, let me pop myself up onto a lookout tower here. I can do... Like I said, was it 38? Freaking calculator. 900 divided by 25. 36. So, I can do four rows of nine, or two rows of 18. So I'm pretty sure, because these guys I can pack in quite tightly, we should be able to do like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we should be able to pack in a fairly tight row here. We'll just align them up like so and drop it back a little bit that looks good yeah that looks good and then I can run because remember three to eight we need three water generators to eight of these so I can run a, a set of eight and another set of eight and another set of eight, another set of eight, and do my three water extractors right here. Boom, 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 three. Boom, 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 three. One, two, three. One, two, three. We might not need all of this petroleum coke. But the idea being is that we're going to have a smart splitters right here. And uh, the smart splitter for the two is then going to go to a, um, probably over here, another awesome sink. And any of the, uh, that was wrong, any of the ex excess coke is going to go into the awesome sink at max speed. Uh, I might need two awesome sinks, because I don't have the uh, belt speed for this. Yeah, I will need two awesome sinks. That is something. Special. Awesome sink. We'll do... One there. Need a little bit more space here. One awesome sink. And of course, let me climb my tower so I can place these properly. Do, do, do. One awesome sink aligned there. And flip it around. And one awesome sink aligned there. Then the belt. We can do, 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 bring this belt tick tick into there. And put down a stackable pole. And bring this belt to there and then down into there. Ha ha! Success. Take that power to bring it to here. And then bring this on over. Plop it down right there. Power up these two awesome sinks. And then program this. Okay, so we want it left being overflow. So we'll go left output is overflow. And right output is any. And left output is overflow. Right output is any. And now these are just plowing into the awesome sink. Excellent. Excellent. 
And we just need to get these guys set up. Boom, there. And get the mergers for this group of four. And belts. Belt it up. Get all of this wonderful petroleum coke coming out. Boom. Excellent. And you are not running for some reason. Why are you not running? Oh, because you don't have a recipe selected. That would be a reason. Excellent! Petroleum coke is being made. I got all the coke cane. I mean, not. <laughs> ah, falling in the water. That's one stackable pole there. Oh, come on. What in the place? Place. <gasps> I'm missing iron plate. How horrid. Oh, God. And it's like. <laughs> just like two iron plate. And that's all I need. It always has to be like that tiny amount of like some insignificant resource that you've just completely forgotten about right at the last moment when you need it to place the thing. <sighs> I could steal some. I could steal this one. There, I stole some iron plate. Could redo this line. Boom, boom. Haha, <laughs> I stole iron plate. I don't have to go all the way back. Yeah! I can get my system fully functional. With all the byproducts being just thrown away. Uh, right over here. And then in between these two, right here. Boom. There we go. There we go. And into there. And then you should start going to this one. Yes! Yes! Look at all of that petroleum coke. It is, for now, being thrown away. However, I do have the ability to use this. We are getting a lot of points for it, but if we need to, we can easily turn that into, like, another 3600 power or whatever it was. It would be... We have 36 of them times 75. We could run another 2,700 power, which would put me up to 5,100. So more than enough that I'll need in the future. But I can always expand the power here when I get there. Right now, we're still only sitting at halfway. But goddamn, also, we're getting a few tickets. There's just a few points per minute as it steadily increases. This will keep the excess here, heavy oil residue. It'll keep it nice and cleaned out of our system. That'll keep our processors here going here, making me my rubber and my plastic. And that'll keep my base filled with those resources. Oh, wonderful. A massive oil rig all set up. Now, we do have two more pipelines coming in. And we don't really have a use for them. For now, we'll just deal with 200 per minute of rubber and plastic. That'll be more than enough than what we need for now. Uh, theoretically, in the future, we could up this and do another 200 of each with these pipelines. Or we can do some other stuff. I kind of want to get into... Uh, Plop this down here. We still need to be able to make some fuel. So I'm thinking this fuel and resin combo would be pretty good. It's taking 60 per minute, so I only need five of these uh, for one pipeline. So maybe I'll do the two pipelines to do this, and it's going to make me the fuel, which then I can go into uh, fuel burners like power actual fuel generators which expensive because we need the uh, heavy modular frames and such but 
150 megawatts of power, which is quite nice. One of those is good for every two coal generators I could get. And I might re, you know, renovate this in the future because it looks like there is a more difficult uh, product line where you can go like you're making your products, you're making your heavy oil residue, then you're getting your residual fuel from the residue, or you're um, making a lot of polymer resin and then using the polymer resin to do stuff instead, and then eventually getting compacted coal as well to make turbo fuel, and then you put that into your generators. It, it can get really complicated with oil, but for now, we have a lot of points and a lot of rubber and plastic coming in as well as we're wow we're actually kicking up there with power that is awesome how much that is using we might actually need to expand this out and actually use all that power it might be required we'll have to see but that'll be for the future for now we have rubber and plastic. I think, at this moment, the base is ready to go into the next level. And we can add one more level to it. And we can go up to doing manufacturers on the top level. As we have everything we need to do in order to make them. But that is going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. Good hunting out there, fellow pioneers.